Hello, and welcome to Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. I'm Sandra Long-Weaver. I'm the editorial director for the Tennessee Tribune. And today, we have two very distinguished guests with us. We have uh, Barbara Landis Bowles, who's chairman of the Board of Trustees of Fisk University. And we have Jacqueline Denton Alton, who's chair of the Presidential Inauguration Committee, as well as chair of the Development Committee for the Fisk Board of Trustees. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. I'm glad to have you here. And Fisk is about to inaugurate its 15th president, Dr. H. James Williams. So how um, I want to talk a little bit about the inauguration, but I also want to talk about some of the accomplishments in the year that Dr. Williams has been here and has taken over the reign of, of Fisk. Uh, so let's start there and talk a little bit about what has happened in that year. He came and Fisk was had substantial financial troubles and I know some things have turned around. Can you give us an idea? Yes, let me just start off by saying that uh, Fisk will be celebrating its 150th year in 2016 so this has been a pivotal time for us and it was made even more so when we realized that we had one last chance to get through uh, the SACS accreditation process where we have been on probation for a couple of years and under warning for a couple of years before that. So we also had to hire a president during that time because Hazel O'Leary, our previous president, had announced her retirement. Yes. And so we concluded that process and uh, Dr. Williams came on board in February. So this is now a year later. This is February of 2013. So all of these things were happening at the same time. Wow. We were putting in place a new president. We were sort of taking a long range view of what, what we would like to see at our 150th year. And we had to go through the SACS accreditation process. And oh, by the way, they decided to make me chair in May of that year. <laughs> so since so it's been during quite that, a busy it's year. been quite a busy year. But during that time, it has been exciting because Dr. Williams came in and did a number of things more or less immediately that we needed to have done in order to prepare us for the accreditation process. Can one you, of, yes, yeah, let me elaborate, elaborate a little, a little bit, bit on those things. Uh, one of the things that he did was to tell us, the board, as well as his whole staff, that we needed to raise more money than we had raised in some time. Mm -hmm. um, and so we all got to work to help Edwina Hamby who was our head of advancement in raising that money. And, and be, because how much were you able to raise? Well, we needed to raise approximately five and a half million dollars, mm -hmm. which is more than most HBCUs have to raise in any given year. We ended up raising 5.8 million, and all of that was to be used for operations, which means we actually raised more money than that, but some of it was restricted. Right. But we raised 5.8 million in unrestricted dollars and that was a need to. The other thing that we needed to do was to make sure that we had our costs in sync with what our budget would allow so that we could have a break-even budget or so that we could be in the black. And Dr. Williams made some very difficult decisions, had to make some cuts at both the academic level and at the staff level. He was able to do that with the agreement of all of the people involved, i.e. the people, the 169 staff members on campus. Mm -hmm. And he was very successful at it because they're still there and we're happy that they're there. And student enrollment has gone up. And in the process, student enrollment went up. It had begun to increase the previous year mm -hmm. and it increased once more under his tenure. And we're working on our third consecutive increase whereby we think this fall we will have in excess of 700 students. Oh, wonderful. So, we're, you know, things are moving in the right direction. We have many more students who have applied to this since we fulfilled the obligation necessary to be SACS accredited, which took place in December. Great. Well, let's turn now to the plans for the inauguration, which takes place April 10th, 2014. And so how is all of that coming together and what can we expect? It is coming together very, very well. The highlight of that weekend is going to be at our gala event, which will be at the Omni Hotel. Uh, the invites have come out, gone out, and we're very interested in getting tons of uh, community participation. Our uh, guests at that uh, inaugural event will be 
Lee Daniels. Oh, really? Right. Who is the uh, director for The Butler. That's correct. And uh, Fisk, as you know, is very much highlighted in uh, our very successful movie, The Butler. Yes. And we were proud of the role that was shown of the stu Fisk students. Okay. As a matter of fact, I was a part of that era. So oh, you were. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Both of you are Fisk graduates. Yes. Uh, 1968 68 and 1966. Okay. And I was in the, I'm in the centennial class. Oh, and wow. I will be celebrating my 50th uh, anniversary in, in uh, six, 2016. Wow, wonderful. So that is a very, very important date for us. It was an important date when we graduated, and it was 100 years, and we'll come back for the 50th anniversary for, and it'll be 150 years. But I was at Fisk when the civil rights marches were going on. Mm -hmm. And it's just really a part of my history and my family's history and my children's history in that uh, it was a positive experience and uh, the school was very supportive of, of students participating in that. Mm -hmm. John Lewis was at Fisk when I was there. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Matter of fact, they dismissed classes for us to march. Oh, they did. I right. didn't realize that. Yes, they support. We, the school was in full support. Mm -hmm. And one thing, the were you scared at all? I've my always goodness. wanted to ask. I'm very afraid. And mm -hmm. I know one day a girl came to my thing and she said, "Jack, you bring a shower cap tomorrow because they're gonna put the water hose on us and the dogs." Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't go that day. <laughs> <laughs> and I was from Nashville, Tennessee, and I just remember that. Uh, do, it was primarily during my freshman year and your, mm -hmm. your, your junior year mm -hmm. uh, that uh, being from Nashville, my mother just said, y'all come home. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she's, she right. waited, with, waited with 20 girls in our house so that she would not be afraid for us. Right. And my friends in that class still remember that. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to say that, you know, one of the things that came out of it was a John Lewis who is exactly. now a congressman and who is actually our honorary head of our comprehensive campaign. Oh, I didn't know. So we're very excited great. about that. Mm -hmm. In addition, um, during that week, you know, we're going to have a free opportunity for everyone to see the inauguration. You mean, maybe all over the campus mm -hmm. in four or five buildings, but uh, I think uh, Dr. Williams will be re very well received that day. Oh, great. Um, and we do have an event that is open to the public. Yeah, that, that was, and what that's is one that? of them, Ryan. Yeah. One of them mm -hmm. is the event where he's the ecumenical event, where oh, he was inaugurated. And okay. there's another event. And it's the event that's in the gymnasium. It's a luncheon, a presidential right. luncheon. Which okay. will be right after he is truly installed. So tickets will be available to right. the public. Will to they the be public. on the FISC website or how will? Yes, they will know? be on the FISC website. We have two or three events. And the Gala event will cost $150. Fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, there's one okay. other event that will cost some money, mm -hmm. but these two events, the ecumenical event and the luncheon, will be free, and all that information will be available on the FISC website. And we would Great. very much like the um, Nashville community to be involved in those. We want to be a part of the Nashville community, which I'm sure we are. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We want everybody to come out. Oh. And how many board 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 members are there? That's Currently, there are twenty. I had to count them this morning because we have two new board members. I believe there are twenty six board members. Oh, yeah. The maximum okay. number we can have is thirty five, and mm -hmm. our goal is to reach at least thirty in the next year. Mm -hmm. By the time of our inauguration, I'd like to see a full complement. Mm -hmm. Oh, but. By April 10th? You're no, no, by 2016, by 2016. we okay. should try to have 35 board members. Okay. You know, I think if you if that's the number you're supposed to have, that's the number you should have. Right. Obviously, we're looking for the best and the brightest, mm -hmm. so it's taking us a little while. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you can tell us about the inauguration or um, that we should be looking for in Nashville? or? Well, uh, the inauguration itself and uh, the event that we'll have in the chapel, the ecumenical uh, program, is going to be very, very interesting. Of course, the Jubilee Singers will be a part of that weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, we're very proud of them. Absolutely. Right. And the dates of uh, the inauguration are April 10th, 11th, and 12th, I believe. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for taking time to come in and tell us about both the inauguration and the upcoming 150th anniversary. We look forward to um, putting out more information and being a part of that as well. And thank you for joining us today. This was Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.